Please be aware that I have no knowledge regarding the original book that this movie is adapted from. I am giving my thoughts solely on the movie adaptation of the book. With that out of the way, let's continue. Where the crawdads sing. Not gonna lie, after seeing that title, my first instinct is not to watch the movie. It's to find out what a crawdad is. Not sure if I've seen any crawdads in the movie. Probably not. Hmm. But what a lovely movie it is. Yeah, oh my god. Is that Noah? Noah Wilson. Yo, Noah! Noah Wilson? This is the future calling. I was wondering when you were going to make this call. Has Jason kicked your ass yet? No, I guess not. How about me spoil your future for you, boy? You can arrange a meet. No need, I'll tell you right here and now. Jason Bourne is going to take you down and you're going to go to a small town and be a lawyer for a girl who lives in the marsh, hiding forever. The story is about the life of a woman who lives in the marsh alone, having minimum contact with the outside world. Her peaceful solitude is disrupted after a famous young man is found dead in the marsh. The prejudice of the townies quickly leads to her being branded as the primary suspect and being held trial for the murder. Throughout the story, we follow her entire life leading up to the trial and continue to see how her life pans out after the trial. The most noticeable upside of the film is no doubt the cinematography and the locations. This is a very beautiful film that fully showcases the beauty of the nature. And the camera work is fantastic. It uses a lot of wide steady shot to fit in as much of the marsh as possible without ruining the focus of the scene. From forest to riverside to seaside, lake, Everything looks gorgeous in the film. And showcasing this nature is also a plus as the marsh plays a major role in the film. Not only as the place where our main character lives, it also represents her struggle, her bravery, her past, her entire life is inseparable with the marsh. These nature shots really adds a lot to the film in terms of story and character, not just something beautiful to look at. But there is one thing that bugs me. The film doesn't look like it took place in the 50s or 60s. The set, the town, the hair, the clothes and all that is from that time. But the film just looks very modern to me. I don't know why, maybe it is the lighting or the cleanliness of everything. It just feels off to me. Whenever the year is indicated on the screen, I just go like, is this really that time? The second biggest highlight is Daisy Edgar Jones. I love her portrayal of the character. She is amazing as the Marsh Girl. She is perfect embodying the character in every stage of her life. At first we saw she is this shy little girl due to her brutal upbringing. Daisy really sells the shyness. Every time she is alone in the wild, you can feel that she is free and comfortable from the way she walks, the way she looks at the plants around her. But when she bumps into anyone, she immediately turns into a scary and helpless girl who doesn't know how to interact with people. The way she hides and peeks at people, the way she looks down instead of facing someone, she is awesome. And later in the story, she can find a balance and perform a hybrid of the character. She interacts normally but still has this little detail that shows that she has lived in the marsh for her whole life. And this movie is about basically her whole life. And she managed to pull that off in quite an impressive manner. And being a tragic character needs a lot from the actor as the audience need to connect with her in order to root for her. And I am delighted to watch her performance in the film. And her story is also fascinating. Once we start to learn about her life, that's where the story starts to interest me. We spend a sufficient amount of time on each stage of her life, as every part of the journey matters. She wouldn't be here if any event is missed out. This is also important as it is crucial to the trial. We need to see her struggle in order to understand how much of an unwinnable situation she is in and how she got there, and ultimately rooting for her to fight through this tough time.
The side characters are important to the character growth, as her story is to learn how to deal with these characters entering her life. The most notable one is the lawyer, Tom, played by David Strand. Not gonna try that. He is amazing in the film as the representation of anti-prejudice and random kindness. But my problem with his character is the story. We do not see him having any extensive interaction with her when she was young. This makes his action to volunteer himself defending her in the court a little bit weak for me. This reduces his character into a basic do-gooder who is all good and never has any internal struggle. To me, he has nothing to lose if she is charged with murder. Because they are not a thing. I don't buy their connection, but he is the heartwarming spot in the film. The store owners are the new parental figure for the Marsh girl. They are your typical good old folks who pity her at first, then genuinely care for her like their own child. They don't really have much to do in the film other than looking out for her, and the actors did a fine job at that. I can believe that they are the kindest people in the town from the mannerism and the way they handle every situation. Her family gets the least amount of screen time, but they play a very crucial role as they are the reason for her to live in solitude. And the two most important characters are the father and her brother. Her brother doesn't really have much time to shine, but the actor is doing a fine job. Her father, on the other hand, is great. Garrett Dillenhan is able to leave a very strong impression with that small amount of screen time. We can see his vulnerability through and through. Then comes to the lovebirds. Played by Taylor Smith and Harris Dickinson. I think Taylor is fine, but Harris is very wooden to me. I don't feel any of his character's emotion most of the time. His face always stays the same. This love triangle is a little bit off the tone sometimes to me. Some of the dating montage are a little too long for my taste, and the writing is not very on point. A lot of things happen off screen for them as we are following the lead. This makes some relevation feel too sudden and cliche. But they are not the focus of the story. They are the side characters that push the main character's growth. The damage is certainly there, but I don't think it is too much. Okay, so after the trial, the biggest problem by far is the ending. So I'm gonna go into spoiler here. If you haven't watched the film, go watch it. It is good. If you don't care or have already watched the film, let's continue. So in the narration of the ending, we learn that Kaya, the Marsh girl, indeed killed Chase. What the hell? I know it shows her growth of courage and strength, but it also completely vanquished her character's representation in a way. Her biggest opponent is the prejudice from the townies. They think she is a murderer because they don't know her. They just see her as a weirdo, so she is definitely a killer. I spend the entire movie learning how much she has gone through. I feel so sorry for her. I root for her to win. But then, when it is all just about her, Kaya laughed at me, making me look like an idiot. Yes, the twist is unexpected, but it completely ruins the message of the film. When I watched to the end, I was like, okay, they are not showing the real killer getting caught. It was cool. I wanted it to be revealed, but after watching the film, I can understand how that is not an important part of the story. What's important is her overcoming the preconceived notion from the people. But having her as the killer justifies every prejudice they have against her. Yes, she grows. Yes, she evolves. Yes, it is logical. But it makes the entire film pointless now, and it also makes the lawyer Tom a complete loser. He is totally exploited by her. She lied to his face. To my face this entire time, and I am an idiot. So I don't know if there is any hint at this. I didn't see it. Just the ending is already perfect, but the last twist at the very end ruins the entire moral of the story for me. Just get out of here. So the film has a very strong production value, great hands behind the camera, and a director who understands her vision. Plus, Daisy's excellent performance in a story that is complete and powerful gives me a very good time. Just a few scenes that can be shortened to have a more coherent tone, and the ending, yeah, the ending, just wow. So if you enjoy this kind of whole life depiction movie that is extremely well shot. Has a solid script and has a great performance from the lead. 
watch this film. It is definitely worth your time. Overall, not bad. I love how an adaptation turns out good. Again, I don't know anything about the original book, but the film is awesome. I love it very, very much. So, have you seen the film? Do you like it? Comment down below and let me know. Thank you for watching. See you next time.